you want to know why the CR system doesn't really work and honestly is kind of terrible unless you're using the one from Xanathar's guide? Let's get into it. So welcome back to the Gamers Hall, guys. I'm Chris, and I'm here to tell you about why I believe the CR system is pretty much crap. And a lot of it has to do with exactly why the designers made their choices in making Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Which, maybe one d d is going to correct this, but as of right now... This is my belief. Okay, so magic items and feats. So feats are technically an optional rule anyways, but as we get closer to 1D&D, feats are becoming not optional. They are going to be something that, I mean, at first level, you're getting a feat. In the new Dragonlance campaign, everyone starts with a feat and there's two that they can choose from so feats are a thing and i think majority of people probably play with feats and if not then i'd be surprised but yeah if you take feats out of the game if you take magic items out of the game that will probably fix the cr system and if you take multi-classing out of the game so if you take those three things, those are the three really big things. Magic items, feats, multi-classing. Two of those are optional. And I'm going to play a quick video here real quick of Jeremy Crawford on one of his Sage devices. And then I'll get into why I believe this. The idea that magic items are extraordinary also informs actually how we balance the game around them. We made it so that no D&D character is required to have magic items to meet the, the sort of survivability and damage output targets we have for characters yeah. at every level. Because So we've actually balanced the entire game with the idea that you could make it all the way to 20th level successfully and not have a single magic item, which is another reason why the attunement uh, number is low because if you have a magic item, especially one that increases your combat effectiveness, mm -hmm. it's always going to make you more powerful than the game expects you to be at baseline. In other words, in 5th edition, a magic item is always good for you in the sense it's always making you better than the game expects you to be. Because the game doesn't expect you to have any magic items. And, and so... That's an important it, distinction from, from, from previous editions. Yes. Yeah. We balanced 4th edition, for example, with the assumption that you had to have magic items and that if you didn't have them, you were not actually keeping up with the game's mathematical expectations. Yeah. In 5th, again, the math of the entire game is built, assuming you don't have any, and we did that on purpose because we wanted magic items to truly be bonus. Yeah. Like, if you've got it. And that's, that is why... If you get, say, a plus one magic weapon, that plus one is good for you no matter what level you are because as far as the game's math is concerned, you are now plus one better than all of the game's math expects you to be. So right there, the game is made with the intention that you're not going to get magic items. The game is made so that every character is supposed to be able to hit their marks on survivability, damage output, all of it, assuming you'll never get a single magic item. So once you throw magic items into this, once you throw multi-classing into this, once you throw feats into this, your CR system means nothing because the game assumes you're not using any of that and you're not gonna get any magic items. So, does the CR system work? Yes. But only if you aren't using these things. Now, it's probably not the only thing. I'm sure there are other factors. But if you take out those three factors right there, your CR system suddenly 
makes sense. It suddenly is going to start doing better than what's expected. And it it's not going to be the bad thing it is now. Because, I mean, I, I tried using the CR system when 5e first came out. And, I mean, once you get to about third level and... No, it just it just it doesn't work anymore. And honestly, hey, you give your characters magic items, you allow them to multi class, and if you use feats, guess what? That CR system doesn't mean anything anymore. It is a at best guideline. So the fact that if you get even just a plus one magic item your character's better. So because your character is that much better, you suddenly have to make the enemies that much better. So you either have to ramp up hit points, you have to add more creatures, you have to um, give them extra reactions or extra AC, something. You have to change the creatures or boost them up to some degree to keep up if either of these three options are on the table and I believe this is a big component of why the CR system is so bad and also granted trust me the CR system doesn't always work because it really depends on what factors are going into the scenario also if any of these three things are added this is why you can't run solo creatures solo i mean sure there are things you can do but most of the time your solo creatures are going to get stomped out and you have to throw minions or other creatures in there you're gonna have to give it extra actions in order to make it so that your solo creature will challenge the party and give them a real encounter that they will remember i mean okay cr system doesn't really work that well and you know it's it's crazy how I mean, the one from Xanathar's works a little bit better, but even it still has its difficulties. So, for instance, so I threw a CR7 with two CR4s at my three 10th level characters that were playing, and they steamrolled it. The CR7 by itself should have made it a balanced encounter. Throwing the two extra CR4s in there should have made it to where they actually had a difficult time. This would have made it a deadly encounter on the encounter building table. But steamrolled it. Okay, they went for a short rest. Got interrupted. And couldn't get the, their short rest resources back. And hit points back for that because they got into a, another encounter. Then they had to decide, are we going to try and actually get another short rest? Or we just continue on? And they continued on. Because there was a good chance that they weren't going to get another short rest. So they continued on. At the end of this, I had two CR8s. And a Helm Tour. I don't remember what the Helm Tour is. But I knew that this was going to be way too tough for them. So I made the Helm Tourer a minion. One hit, he's dead. Done. Next, I actually toned down the two CR8s because if you go by the Encounter Builder, it's a deadly encounter. And if you go by Xanathars, I'm, they're going to get wiped out by these guys. So I was like, okay, just to tone it down, I'm not going to use all of the abilities that these two CR8s have. Uh, they have some spell casting. I'm only going to use a couple of spells out of the many spells that they had. And a couple of them were at will. 
like at will dispel magic didn't even use it so i'm not going to and that'll bump its cr down some the next thing i was like okay i'm gonna reduce all their damage by half so whatever i roll i'm gonna half that and that's gonna be their damage adding these factors in they should have had a decent fight and I damn near TPK the party and this is after I weakened them but granted I was also playing them very smart I was using good tactics against them and also they had already lost some of their resources so when you factor in these things sometimes the CR system does work but most of the time it's not it's just a pretty busted system just for the sheer fact that the game is designed that one optional rule feet you're not using them multi-classing you're not using it and the other thing is magic items the moment you give any creature any of your imp uh, player characters magic items they are instantly better and so much better to the fact that you you can't use the CR system and like, granted I know everyone has known for a long time that the CR system doesn't work and DMs just kind of have to go with the flow and honestly you could even have I've had I've had four level seven characters that I almost TPK'd with 10 goblins and one goblin boss because I was using good tactics and you know just guerrilla warfare and you know th things like that aren't taken into account but you know the main reason the sy system doesn't work is because the game isn't designed to handle it so the moment any of your players are using either of those two optional uh, features or you give them magic items it's done it's you know you're gonna have to start ramping up stuff adding extra stuff or have some really good tactics and that's why the CR system doesn't really work that well and if you're a new dungeon master, don't try to understand it. Just wait for one D&D. Hopefully, maybe that'll fix it. But otherwise, just don't because you'd just be wasting your time. It's, it's easier to just play the game and see what they can handle and learn how to ramp up encounters as they're happening can sometimes make it more fun and enjoyable for your players uh, I've I've done that a lot and but I've also had to ramp down an encounter to because I made mistakes but what do you guys think have, have any of you ever played without either of those three things did it make it different or did you DM and not use any of these did the CR system work for you guys or has no one ever really followed the CR system? Uh, I just kind of wanted to do a little deeper dive on it just to see because most people will tell you the C CR system sucks. And the reason why is because players either steamroll it or the monsters are a lot stronger than what they think they actually are. But I don't think I ever remember anyone saying why. And when I saw this video, I, I couldn't help it. Like, this is why, for the most part, it's just not really worth its salt. Anyways, guys, t tell me what you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Other than that, keep having fun with your gaming table and keep rolling them Nat 27s.